Welcome to the OLV Daily Reflection for Saturday, November 20th. Today is the last day of the church's liturgical year. The gospel passage for today's daily mass comes to us from the 20th chapter of St. Luke's Gospel. It reads, Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman but died childless. Then the second and the third married her. And likewise, all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are the children of God because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush, when he called out, Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. Some of the scribes said in reply, Teacher, you have answered well, and they no longer dared to ask him anything. In today's passage, Jesus answers the question of the Pharisee, but he goes even further and talks about the resurrection. Jesus' insights into the resurrection are worthy, our, are worthy of our consideration on this last day of the liturgical year. Because Jesus tells the crowd that those who do not marry or enter into marriage prefigure or point out what the resurrection from the dead will look like. Because what happens is, is that once we die, marriages are dissolved. We, after death, if we enter into eternal life in heaven, is focused on praise and worship of God. We experience the fullness of life and love that we only saw at a distance while living. But in heaven, we experience that fully. And then, with the resurrection from the dead, we are given glorified bodies almost like that of the angels. And again, we become truly the children of God and experience the fullness of eternal life with resurrected bodies and the ability to live and worship forever in the eternal kingdom of God. Now, with all that being said, no one has ever experienced the resurrection from the dead. And furthermore, no one knows when it will happen, including Jesus. But on this last day of the liturgical year, we're reminded that the resurrection is the culminating event of the kingdom of God. And that this event, which will happen at the end of time, is the source of our greatest hope. Everything that we have done in our bodies while living out our lives culminates forever in the resurrection where we worship God in our glorified bodies that do not know aging, decay, pain, suffering, or disorder. Now for the Sadducees, everything I just described about the resurrection from the dead was too much for their personal belief. And furthermore, it is truly a belief of us Christians in the resurrection that many people struggle with. Because again, it has not happened yet, and furthermore, we don't know when it will happen. But what we do know is that Christ rose from the grave. He is resurrected. So our Lord and Savior not only conquered death by his own death and resurrection, but he also showed us that he will lead the way through his ascension. And furthermore, as he was with the disciples here on earth, he demonstrated what a glorified body could do. Again, no aging, 
no pain, no suffering, and not bound to temporal realities in the same way as our bodies. So our belief in the resurrection as Christians is strengthened by what Christ has already done. And the fact that our great high priest, our shepherd, has led the way. But also I would say for us as Catholics, our belief in the resurrection is also strengthened by the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. She, who did not know sin, did not have to go through the corruption of death, but was truly assumed into heaven to be with her glorified Son. So both of these examples help us to deepen our belief in the resurrection and truly renew our hope that, yes, we don't know exactly how everything will happen with the resurrection or when it will happen. But Christ has opened the way. The Blessed Virgin Mary has followed. And we need to maintain our hope until that time when we, who have lived out our faith in a way that we united ourselves to Christ fully at death, can experience the glorification that will come with the resurrection. So on this final day of the liturgical year, let us renew our hope in the resurrection and truly set our sights on the glory that is to come because of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lady of Victory, pray for us.